Hi everybody, my name's Pieter Valentine. I've written two books, The Residence Voice and The Residence Rise. Now today's session is on the long lost sons. Now in a dementia unit, typically the men, especially if they're younger, uh, well actually all men I'd say, uh, spend a lot of the time at the door banging on it trying to work the lock and wanting to get out. I want to get home, I want to get out, I want to get out of this place, it's a jail, let me out. That's pro in, for distressed male residents, that would be the main line. But for distressed female residents, the line is, I want to see my son, get me my son. Now, often they'll say as well, you know, that they just want to get out and I want to get the, you know, get the police. But more so often than not, they want to see their son. And many will stay, you know, hours at the front desk calling out, you know, the name of their son plaintively. And I thought initially when I started to work in dementia that um, it was because the women were calling out because um, the sons didn't come very often, you know, and that it was the daughters that mainly came dutifully and not the sons. But actually, the longer I worked in dementia and the more that I thought about it, observed and experienced the work and, and the relatives and, and the input, I was actually pleasantly surprised. Um, there's actually a lot of sons that make a lot of effort with their mothers, uh, many more than I thought was possible and, and to a much greater degree. So I'll just explain the overall um, observations that I've had in terms of um, the long lost sons or the contribution of sons and how we can go about bettering it indeed if we need to at all. So um, there was one incident, the one and only incident I knew of where a family member took a mother out regularly overnight to stay was actually um, a son that was doing that, his mother. Um, she'd had the family farm and then he was the son on the family farm and he used to take her every few months to the farm to stay overnight. Now she wasn't actually an easy resident to, person to look after. She did have anger issues but he was able to de-escalate her really well. You know she needed medication, um, you know there's a lot to taking someone out overnight, showering, dressing, bedtime, you know toileting, the whole works, isn't it? Caring. Um, so he was able to manage that remarkably well and did that regularly every three months. And no one else I know of, male or female, ever ever did that. I know of one or two people that took someone out overnight, but, you know, didn't have a, had a bit of a, you know, either the person fell or, um, you know, they could be up all night if the person wasn't sleeping. There's many things that can go astray, amiss, when you take someone out from a dementia unit because they're not orientated to it, are they? They're, and a dementia unit is all flat and they go home and there's steps and stairs and furniture they can trip on and yeah, it really takes a lot of over, oversight uh, and you know, keen observation um, to be able to take someone home. You really need to be with them the whole time. But the second thing, the second uh, instance of a son really making a big effort for his mother, this guy, son, he didn't actually visit his mother very much, I have to say. But when he did, he gave her great trips out. He only came, I think, every three, four months. I mean, he may have lived a long way away. I don't actually know. But anyway, when he came, he used to take her for the most fabulous trips. One trip, he took her to the local art gallery because she was an artist and loved art. Then he took her for a walk around the park. Then they went for coffee and lunch and like it was a whole day thing. Another day he took her out for a birthday in the wheelchair and they went to see three different lots of friends and no trouble getting mum in, getting mum out, getting the chair in, getting the chair out. Quite a big deal. Um, and, she, you know, that sustained her for months. So they were great trips out by those two sons. Um, Two other sons who were particularly good were actually account, uh, no, no, they were bank managers, that's right, bank managers, money, right? They worked in finance. Their mother was really charming. She was an ex-nurse. And um, they used to come at separate times, sometimes uh, at the same time. And they were so um, 
empathetic. They were so empathetic, these two men. I think his, the mother was extraordinary. I mean, I think she'd brought them up. She'd been widowed early and she'd been an extraordinary mother, uh, seemingly, because these two boys were lovely men, well, men now, and they'd come to the activities, they'd say hi to mum, even from a distance, they wouldn't even go, they'd just make sure she's, she knew they were there, they'd wave, say their names, oh, whoever, I'm Tim, I'm here, and then they'd sit in the group session, and not even by their mother, but, you know, just facing her, or not even that, just so, in the group, just with all the other residents, you know, and uh, they'd sit there, often for an hour, and listen to the news, and or watch the, you know, Crown or David Attenborough if it was on, and and just relax, and um, as you would in the lounge at home, I think. And the mother would sometimes wave to them to say hi. <laughs> that was it. That was the that was the visit. She loved it. They loved it. It was great for the unit because they'd get to see other lovely, handsome young men around. You know, it's, they always love to see men in a dementia unit because everyone most most of the residents are women so any man whatever age is relished you know so these men would sit there and the residents loved the company and the mother loved them being there and they were so low key they they never looked at their iphone turned it off they were totally present and engaged and it was just so heartwarming that you know and um it was so um, engaging. It was inclusive, engaging, and actually helpful because having um, other people in the workshop that haven't got dementia, it gives a bit of spirit to it, you know, a bit of interest. So they were really good. The sister, I have to say, not so, two sisters, but one of the sisters wasn't so great. She um, used to come and see mother and spend all the time on the iPhone. You know, she'd spend longer, well, she'd stay for often an hour and a half, but all the time on the iPhone. So, you know, that's not being present or engaged, but the two sounds were fabulous. Now, um, so that does some good examples of the long lost sons. Now, um, another example was a son who, he was high executive position, corporate, flat out, kids, young, well, teenage kids, they all played sport. <laughs> he was, in, you know, 50 hour a week job. And when he used to come, he was pretty exhausted. So he used to just sort of flake out on the couch with his, or in the chair with his mother for his, you know, 10, 15 minute visit. And I, I, this woman had been sporty in her day and was really keen to get outside for a walk. She was, you know, really frustrated with, with being in the unit. Um, she found it incredibly stressful not being able to get outside as many do, but she in particular was really stressed. And I used to think, why doesn't he just take her out for a walk? You know, she so needs a walk. She hasn't had a walk for months, literally, outside the unit. And she's fit and active and totally capable. I couldn't understand, you know, why he wouldn't do that. And um, I think one of the reasons was because he was exhausted. He was pretty much, he was the power of attorney. Um, he was looking after most of the you know, issues around, you know, financial issues, social issues around the mother. She used to phone a lot throughout the day and sometimes the staff would pull it through, demanding this and that. And it was like quite difficult for him. And the rest of the family weren't helping too much. Others were overseas, two or three of the siblings overseas. And so he was doing the best he could, I think, in the circumstances. But I just think, I think in those circumstances, one it would have been really helpful if he could have got his daughter, who was a very sporty, um, I think, netballer as well. In New Zealand, everyone plays, lots of girls plays netball. Well, hockey, hockey or netball. She was very sporty. And I'm sure she would have taken the grandmother out for a walk if the son had initiated it. But he didn't seem to think about that, you know. And oh, she only had about three walks a year or something you outside you know she'd go out for christmas day and maybe when her daughter came from singapore um she took her out for lunch and breakfast often for the week that she was here so that was really good a good big week but otherwise she never really got out and i just think you know um 
if you're stretched yourself as a care, you know, as, as the main support person, if you can't take the person out for a walk and you haven't got the energy um, or time or whatever, um, at least please try and get a, a granddaughter or a friend or someone else to take your mother out for a walk because it's really needed. Whilst visits are great, the walk, especially if the person is fit and strong and distressed about not getting out, it's so important because what actually happens is all week mother will be calling out, where's my son, where's my son? Like even if he's all been visiting regularly, still it's the same plaintive call. Where is he? Where is he? You know, he might have been coming every day, but still, you know, for the rest of the 23 hours, she's wondering where he is. But anyway, um, so with these plaintive calls from the from the desk and, you know, with the, the mother getting stressed, um, if she can get out regularly to walk, as well as the visits, as well as the six o'clock phone calls are a really good idea, rather than all day um, calling out to the charge nurse that she wants to phone the son. If you can have a set time where you actually phone your mother, um, that's excellent because that frees up the charge nurse to know when to call you. She knows when you when she phones that you'll be available. She can say to your mother, look, six o'clock, you can phone your son, David, say, and it frees up the rest of the desk, it was part of the desk, so the others can have a chance to call their, you know, relatives. Um, usually there's a queue waiting to get through. So there's lots of very good sons, and of course there's lots of sons that live in the same city and you never see them, you know. Sad, of course. Um, for varying reasons, I'm sure, you know. I, some people do find it difficult to come to dementia units. I, you, can, you can see that, you know, that they're, they're awkward, they're ill at ease. It's, you, know, you, you can just see it from the expression, <laughs> expression on their face that they're really not dealing with it that well. Um, and, you know, maybe it's for valid reasons, you know. They don't like to see their mother like that or their father or whatever. But there's some that just procrastinate, like all of us in life, you know, procrastinating. Oh, yes, I'll get there. I'll get Must see mum. Must see. Yes, yes. And of course, it never happens, does it? So, you know, the procrastinators aren't, you know. Uh, yeah, I mean, it's frustrating because often what happens is that the dedicated son, say, may come over from, say, Australia and he's keen to take the you know, mother out and go out for lunch and everyone else turns up, don't they? You know, for the special lunch on a special occasion. But they're not there for the rest of the year, even though they live in the same city. No doubt, maybe saying to the overseas son, yes, yes, mum's fine. I think that's a, actually, that, that's a key, that's, that's actually um, a, a line to note. Oh, yes, yes, mum's fine. She's well cared for. Often that's the line that's given when you haven't been visiting, you know, um, because, oh, the carers are doing everything. What have we got to do? It doesn't matter if we don't go. Whereas if if you are visiting genuinely, then you'll have heaps of updates, won't you, about how mum is or isn't or what she needs or doesn't need or how she's managing or whether she needs walks or whether she needs, you know, magazines or the newspaper subscription or you know there's so many things on and on it goes about what someone needs if you're visiting regularly you'll have plenty of updates on mum if you're not visiting regularly what you'll probably say is mum's fine that's it so that's a cue that that person will not have been visiting mum so okay um so okay so i think you know, everyone's got their own style, haven't they, and, and their own family networks and way they ways they get around things. But I think in essence, the big thing is that if mum's distressed, if she wants to get out for a walk, if she needs visits, you know, if the whole, as much as possible, if the family can get that happening for mother, and especially getting the newspaper subscriptions going, the magazines going, if she likes reading, out walking with someone, if she wants to get out walking and making that little bit of extra effort, you know. Um, uh, and even if you have to employ a carer to come in and take mum out for a walk, um, you know, it's, it's, it's so important because otherwise it can be so extremely stressful for the person in the unit. 
but I think, you know, no iPhones, um, quality visits, um, walks if you can, bring an activity. Actually, the women, the daughters, I find increasingly so, actually, as time goes on, activities activities are a really, um, I think they're catching on in lots of different places. Often now you'll see the daughters coming in with the, you know, the, the big bag full of, you know, jigsaw puzzles and crayons and, you know, rubbers and what else? Um, uh, colouring in books and whatever. Different activities all labelled and stacked and see-through fabulous containers so they can just get them out, put them on the table and then just, you know, do whichever activity the person's in the mood for. It's a little bit like those little lunch boxes, isn't it? I saw a child with one today at a cafe and you know, they've got raisins and they've got peanuts and they've got, I don't know how many things he had in that lunchbox. It was quite a big lunchbox and he was picking away. Um, and, you know, so he had lots of variety to eat while he was having lunch. I thought, hmm, that's a good idea. Um, the same thing with activities. If there's a different range of activities for mum, uh, you can link in with that according to her mood on the day. So daughters are good at that. I mean, also... On average, I'd say daughters tend to come for longer. Their visits are longer than than the men. Um, but the men are the ones that's, that do go, go all out and give them like fantastic trips, as I've explained. Um, I think another point here to note, last point, in terms of long lost sons, if you've been overseas, you know, and, um, and you haven't seen your mother for a long time, most sons do make the effort then, sure to take them out for lunch or to have a nice trip out because they haven't seen them for such a long time. But um, even if you're in Christchurch and, you only, and you're only and you not seeing mum much, you know, and you do come in, don't just make it a 10 minute phone call, uh, 10 minute visit, which sometimes happens. It's not helpful and it's distressing for the for mother because, you know, sometimes it takes five, 10 minutes for her to get to, you know, realize that you're actually there it's not just dreaming it's reality and wow you know her lovely son has arrived and how proud is she and by the time she's shown you off to all her friends and residents this is my son you know he's arrived my love my lovely son and by the time the residents then praise you and how lovely it is to see you all, all that that takes about 10 minutes and then for her to sort of get her cogs cognitive wheels going enough to be able to ask whatever questions she'd like to ask you know that takes another 10 minutes then you might need to take it to the toilet we all know how long that takes I mean you know so really give it the time so that even if she's not seeing you so much it's a good quality well spirited heartfelt enjoyable you know um, visit so that hopefully she can harness it to sort of harness it to the heart so to speak enough to be able to reduce her stress and reduce her longing for the next time that you hopefully visit. It's not an easy area, by the way. It's really not easy, this subject. You know, women just just going out of their minds because they're not seeing their sons. Um, it's not an easy subject. <laughs> and even the sons that make a really big effort, the mother can still escalate. But, you know, and that's part of it, isn't it? I mean, you can only do your best. But there are some pivotal things that do make a big difference. And that is not having the iPhone, on, you know, when you're visiting, taking them out for a walk. And if they go through any of their, you know, high stress, dementia, spins and experiences, knowing how to deal with that, which is another video. I might do another one on that. How to deal with mum when she's um, going through the high dementia stress experience. It's important to know how to deal with that and to de-escalate her. But anyway, time's up for us here. Um, I'll just leave the links below to the two books. And thank you very much for your um, likes and your viewing and your subscriptions. And please subscribe. I really appreciate the support. Thank you.